Hey guys, it's Sarah. Today's video is going to be all about some products that I think deserve way more hype than they get. This is kind of the follow-up to my overhyped products video, products that receive a lot of hype that I just, they just didn't really live up to the hype for me. These are products that I love. They like stand out above all the other products that I have tried, yet it seems like hardly anyone knows about them. Most of it is drugstore, but I do have a couple of high-end products in here too. So. Let's start with a concealer. I actually finished this, like it is empty. I scraped it clean. This is the Jordana Take Cover Concealer. I have the shade Porcelain. The thing about Jordana is you can't really find them in stores anymore. I think they're still sold in some Walgreens, maybe some Kmarts too, but they're really hard to find in stores these days. They used to be a lot more accessible at Walgreens, but you pretty much have to buy them online, which I feel like that's not that big of a deal. I mean, we buy a lot of things online nowadays, so I don't mind. And their products are so affordable. They're one of my favorite brands. I do wish they were sold in stores, but anyway, I kind of just bought this concealer when I was ordering a bunch of stuff to do like a best and worst of Jordana video on my channel last year. I wasn't expecting much. I was just like, eh, whatever, I'll try it. And the thing about it is it's definitely not full coverage, at least if you have actual dark circles. If you have very light dark circles, it may give you as full of coverage as you could possibly want, but for me it's definitely more of like a natural coverage. You can still sort of see some darkness under my eyes, but it looks so beautiful on the skin. It's one of those concealers that I don't know if it just interacts well with my skin type, but it just meshes with my skin so quickly. I can blend it in with either a sponge or a brush. I usually prefer a sponge, but brushes work really well too. And it just blends out so quickly and seamlessly, and the finish is just... I wouldn't say it's overly dewy, but it just looks really natural and skin-like, and that's really all I could want out of a concealer. I would rather have a natural skin-like concealer than one that is super full coverage, I've realized. Now, when I do want really, really full coverage, this isn't the one that I'm reaching for, but day to day, it's just such a beautiful, creamy, not too heavy concealer, and I just can't recommend it enough. It has a really good shade range too, so this is by far my favorite concealer that I've tried, like, ever. Really wasn't expecting to like it nearly as much as I did, so. That one kind of just came out of nowhere, but another Jordana product that I'll just go ahead and talk about since we're on the topic of Jordana, but this is their Sculpt and Go Creamy Contour Stick, and this is actually like a pretty cool toned contour color. I feel like it's hard to find a tone like this at the drugstore. So many contour sticks are actually like really orangey and warm, like more like bronzer sticks. But this one is actually a great tone for contouring. I have the shade Light. They also make a medium and a deep. I'm not sure if those are also super cool toned or not because I haven't tried them or swatched them myself. But this light contour, if you have a fair to even medium skin tone, I think this would be a great, like, true contour. I usually prefer to just put it on a brush, like just a sort of dense angled contour brush like this one. Apply it to the brush first and then just lightly contour my cheekbones, my forehead. It's creamy, it blends out nicely, it doesn't look muddy on my skin. I think that's an issue I run into a lot with bronzers and contour-like products. Like, if I apply them right here, it's very hard for me to get them to not look like I just smeared dirt all over my skin because I have a fair skin tone. But this one it makes it so easy, it looks really natural and I never get like a muddy look with it. So I really think this deserves more hype. Partly because it's so hard to find a tone like this at the drugstore, but also just because of how nice it looks on the skin. Let's jump around and talk about a high-end eyeshadow palette. I say high-end, it's not really a brand that you can get at Sephora, it's more of an indie brand, but it is around the $50 price point, so it's, you know, I would consider that a high-end price, but it's the Billy Beauty Eyes of India palette. This is definitely an indie brand. They launched, I think, probably in 2019, if not maybe the end of 2018. They're a pretty new brand. This was the first product they launched, and they did also come out with some lipsticks recently. But I love this palette. I feel like I haven't given it much love recently, just because I've been playing with a lot of other eyeshadows lately, but this is such a great palette. Like, it has... It's one of the smaller palettes in my collection. It only has 10 shades. Most of my palettes are around like 12 to 14 shades. So it's a little bit smaller than my average palette, 
But despite that, there is so much variety in this palette. You get some neutral staple colors like a uh, shimmery cream color, a dark brown, a black, some warm crease colors, uh, a gold, but then you also have four really fun colorful shimmers. My favorite shade in here is Mayo, which is this really beautiful cobalt blue. The green is gorgeous, this pink is gorgeous. Like, you can go in so many directions with this palette, even though it is kind of a curated selection of colors. So, I just, if you're wanting to support an indie brand and maybe just try a new brand of eyeshadows, I've loved this palette since day one, and I just think it's fun and just a little bit different than what you normally would see. So, the only thing I will note is that these three shades down here, the purple, blue, and green, those do have to be used with a wet brush, so if, if you don't like doing that, then you may want to skip it, but I feel like it just makes those shadows apply so vibrantly. They don't work nearly as well if you apply them with a dry brush, so I definitely recommend using a wet brush, either spray it with some setting spray or just some water, and they are beautiful. So. Um, I think it was Rianne that, Rianne HY, she's one of my favorite YouTubers, that originally turned me on to this brand and this palette, um, and I'm so glad that I bought it. The minute I saw her using this palette in a video, I knew I was going to buy it. I just, I just had that gut feeling, like I just want that palette so badly, and I don't regret buying it at all. I just think it's such a, such a lovely palette. I feel like I haven't mentioned that in a while on my channel, but... I do really love that palette. Some e.l.f. products. You knew there were going to be some e.l.f. products in this video. E.l.f. is, I would have to say e.l.f. is my favorite brand. But this mascara has quickly become a favorite over the last few months. It's the e.l.f. Keep Your Curl Mascara. Um, it is my kind of brush. It's a spiky rubber bristle brush. You guys always are so impressed by my ability to say rubber bristle brush. This reminds me so much of the Balm Mad Lash. I've talked about it so many times on my channel since I discovered it. Um, if you like that type of brush, it's got a curved wand. It's It really separates your lashes, but it also builds really nicely. It gives you volume and length. It just, it does everything that you could want a mascara to do in my opinion. And it just does such a good job like hugging your lashes and building on itself. I've tried a few mascaras from e.l.f. None of them that I tried in the past really impressed me very much, so I really was not expecting much from this. I, the only reason I bought it was because I was doing a full face of e.l.f. Uh, video, and I needed a, an e.l.f. mascara, and this one had good reviews, so that's why I got it. I was like, this is probably going to be mediocre. Um, no, it is incredible if you like this style of brush, because I know some people really don't like rubber bristle brushes. Totally understandable. You probably wouldn't like it if that's you, but I love this mascara. I will most likely repurchase it. I even think I like it better than the Flower Lash Warrior because the brush is a little bit smaller so it gives you a little bit more control. But I still love the Flower Lash Warrior too. So let's see, another e.l.f. product. I'm gonna breeze through this very quickly because you guys have heard me talk about this ad nauseum. You're probably tired of hearing about it, but it's the e.l.f. Long Lasting Lustrous Eyeshadow in the shade Soiree. I also really loved the shade Toast, which was a gold. I used that one up a couple years ago. It's a cream metallic shadow, similar to a ColourPop Super Shock shadow, so if you like that type of kind of malleable, creamy formula, oh my gosh, so pretty. So, so pretty. Beautiful one shadow look. Just slap it on your lids, blend it out with a crease brush, and you're done. I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. I don't know why they don't expand the shade range and like re-promote it because it would I think it would be so successful. Especially right now, I think people are really getting into these kind of one and done single cream shadows. So anyway, also this shade, I don't know if they're discontinuing these. Oh my gosh, I hope not. But the last few times I've checked, this shade has been out of stock on their website, which makes me a little nervous, but I do hope they bring it back because such a pretty eyeshadow really does feel high-end. Like, Urban Decay could charge like $18 for this and it would be worth the price. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I'm glad that it's only $3, but I'm just saying it feels a lot more expensive than it is. Another e.l.f. product, this one I'm actually wearing on my lips right now. I sort of forgot, I didn't forget about it, but I didn't use it for a while because I was just focusing on other lip products, but this is going to be like a rediscovered favorite for me this summer. I just, I can feel it. It's the e.l.f. Gotta Glow Lip Tint. I have the shade Perfect Berry. I know they have other shades too, but this is what I'm wearing on my lips right now. And is this not just the most beautiful, effortless wash of color? Is It is so pretty. Just add some more on. It looks kind of scary in the tube because it's like a dark, almost black 
purple color, but I mean, this is what it looks like on. And it really is my perfect berry. It makes my lips look so healthy. I think if you like a light berry lip color, you'd really like this. I think it kind of just fits with my undertones of my skin really well. But they also have like a pink and a peach if those kind of match your undertones better. But I love this product so much. I need to keep it in my purse and just, well, not that my purse is really getting used lately, but I need to just keep it out on my vanity and remember to use it more because it makes me so happy. Like there's just something beautiful about this. It wears really nicely. It goes on like a tinted balm, but then even after the balmy feeling wears off, it sort of just leaves behind a really pretty lip stain almost. So why does no one talk about these? I really don't know. Another lip product, this is more high-end. This is the other high-end product I have to mention. This is from Red Apple Lipstick. I feel like Red Apple Lipstick got a lot more hype on YouTube and maybe like the 2015 era of YouTube among like the cruelty-free and more like either vegan YouTubers or like more natural beauty YouTubers. I feel like I used to see a lot of Red Apple Lipstick moving around on YouTube, but lately I don't hear anyone talking about it. I have the shade Beachside here, and if you like a very creamy, glossy lip color, this is so nice. It's very soft, as you can see, mine kind of like tilted over, probably because it got a little too warm in my apartment, it happens sometimes, but such a beautiful, just like glossy finish, creamy lipstick. Um, I like it because, well, partly because of the color. I really like this tan color. It's a really kind of different nude from anything else that I have. It just makes my lips look so healthy. So if you like that kind of gloss lipstick hybrid, you'd really like this. I mean, these are a little pricey. I think they're like $23.50 a piece. So maybe catch them during a sale or something, but I just, I love this. There's nothing really from the drugstore that I've tried that's quite like this. I'm sure there probably are drugstore alternatives, but... I really kind of want more shades. Okay, so I have a ColourPop Super Shock Shadow here, and I know ColourPop Super Shock Shadows obviously get a pretty decent amount of hype, but I wanted to give a specific shout out to their matte formula because I feel like usually when you hear about Super Shock Shadows, you're hearing about like their metallic or shimmery ones, but I have a matte one here in the shade Bill. I've already hit pan on this, even though I, I really haven't used it that much. Like I feel like it didn't take long to hit pan probably just because it's such a creamy formula, but this is, oh my gosh, such a beautiful, dusty mauve color. I, I mean, that is just like my favorite color of eyeshadow right there, but I used to be such a shimmer person, and I still am, but there is really something to be said for just a light or medium toned matte wash of color all over your lid, just like as a one shadow look. Or you can put this all over, blend it into the crease, and then top it with a shimmery shadow as well, but I really, really like this color. And I just think their matte Super Shock shadows maybe deserve more hype, I'm just saying. I feel like you, you don't really hear about those very often, but that is just such a pretty color. So if you have like a favorite tone of eyeshadow, like for me it's Dusty Rose, but let's say you like like a medium warm brown just all across your lid, or just a peachy color, anything, pick one in a color that you like that's sort of like a mid-tone color and just put it all over your lid, blend it up into the crease, beautiful one shadow look, and it just gives you a lot of dimension even though there really is no shimmer to it. I really love that color. So those are eight makeup products, drugstore and high-end, that I feel like just, they just deserve more hype. I've, it seems like nobody really knows about these products, nobody talks about them, so I would like to try to change that by just putting my voice out there. I highly recommend all of these products. If any of them sound like they're up your alley, I don't think you'll be disappointed. They're all amazing. So I hope this was a fun video. It's so much fun to just like shine a light on maybe underhyped makeup products, kind of those hidden gems. I love hearing about hidden gems, especially drugstore, because there's a lot of good out there that for whatever reason, they just don't get talked about, maybe because a lot of big YouTubers didn't get them in PR packages when they came out, or they just get, kinda get lost in the shuffle. So I hope this gave you some ideas for some really good products to maybe check out next time you're on the market for some. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up so I know that you liked it. Also, definitely make sure to check out my overhyped products video, products that I don't really get the hype on. But if you enjoyed and you'd like to keep hanging out with me, definitely make sure to subscribe. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday all about cruelty-free makeup. Hopefully I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.